Um, here's my basic point, everybody. Jesus, the Word made flesh, is the icon according to which we understand the nature of reality. Oh, Jesus is a distant figure, ethical teacher, inspiring moral figure. If that's all he is, the heck with him. The Christian claim is far more maximal than that. The word, the logos, the pattern, if you want, the pattern of the divine mind by which the whole of the universe has been created has become flesh, and now we can see him. Think of those apostolic testimonies as the word of life, which we saw with our eyes and touched with our hand. The icon became visible, and that's the pattern according to which we see all of reality. You know, I don't know if you read The New Yorker magazine. I get The New Yorker largely for the cartoons, uh, which I love because, you know, they're clever and they're funny, and, and usually I get them, <laughs> but occasionally there'll be a cartoon that I don't get. And I bring it down to a friend of mine, Father John Lodge, who also reads The New Yorker and is kind of a, a wag, and then he'll explain to me why that, that cartoon is funny. And, and here's why I bring it up, is... John doesn't point out to me anything I had not seen in the cartoon, nothing I had missed in the caption. What he points out, though, is that mysterious, elusive thing called the pattern. When you get a joke, it's a very mysterious thing. I mean, you see everything, you've read the caption, you understand it, but you don't get it because the pattern hasn't emerged. Wittgenstein, the great 20th century philosopher, said the most puzzling issue in all of philosophy is how to see something as something. It's very interesting, isn't it? We see things, but then we see them as something. That means we get the pattern. Here's the maximal Christian claim that Jesus is the pattern, the logos. He's the reasonability by which we get the world. That without him, the world remains opaque to us. No matter how clever we are in the various disciplines, no matter how much we learn in the various fields, without him, we don't get it. Turn it around. Jesus is a kind of epistemic trump, if I can put it that way. Meaning, no view of the world can finally trump him, can outmaneuver him. He's the logos by which we understand the world. Now, mind you, under that Logos, capital Lambda, there's all kinds of smaller Logoi. Think of all the dif different disciplines. The Catholic imagination has always been very hospitable to a wide variety of perspectives, viewpoints, disciplines. Think of the great St. Bonaventure, a Franciscan uh, master from the Middle Ages, who saw Christ as the center of all the other disciplines. Good. All the logoi make sense in relation to him who is the logos. So that's, if you want to put it this way, a sort of challenging claim I make first. I'm not going to go charging up the hill of secular modernity. At the same time, I hope it's an inviting claim. It's a generous claim that all the logoi of the world can find their relation to him. G.K. Chesterton, a great hero of mine, said that the church is the trysting place of all the truths in the world. That's the generous quality of the Catholic intellectual tradition. Okay? How about this, you know, from the, from the scriptures, that Jesus is the icon, we hear Paul say, the image, the icon of the invisible God, in whom all things in heaven and earth were created, in whom all things hold together. There's the maximalism I'm talking about. He's the lens. He's the pattern. Here's Hans Urs von Balthasar. Christ is the unchangeably valid blueprint in every situation in the world and in history. That's the Christian claim. If, if you, that's not the case, then uh, the uh, first verse of John's Gospel is wrong. That's the Christian claim. Okay, what I want to do now in the course of this uh, presentation is to specify this by looking at four applications of this idea. Four consequences of the view that Jesus is the lens. And let me lay them out to you first, and I'll go through them one by one. First of all, Jesus teaches us about God's non-competitive transcendence. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Secondly, the icon of Jesus teaches us a radical humanism. Third, the icon of Jesus teaches us everything we need to know about creation 
ex nihilo. And finally, the icon of Jesus reveals to us the dynamics of the Paschal mystery. And I'm going to argue those four things help to illumine the way we see all of reality. Okay, that's the uh, program I'll be following tonight. And if you're keeping score, we've got those four things I'll be moving through.